welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk all about making your videos look hand drawn, look painted over by adding custom textures, animating them easily within After Effects, and then adding in some other finishing touches. So let me give you some examples. We're going to do a little artist showcase here. This is Will Sal. I'll leave his Instagram down below. And this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about with using texture with your video. Everything's moving pretty fast, but if you just pause and look, you can see if you pay attention to the edges and how everything reacts. I really love the style of this it adds an artistic touch if you just pause through here you can see all these different cool looking textures that are used throughout super awesome so shout out to will.cell i do want to mention here for a lot of these little post-processing effects that i added on top of the texture such as this and this these are all presets from my new cyber glitch effects pack which i dropped recently if you guys would like to pick up these presets as a way to kind of add some cool little inverts or stack on top of this i'm going to put a discount code on the screen here there will be a link to my web store down below if you are interested. So let's get started with our tutorial here. I'm using stock footage from pexels.com. I just looked up model and downloaded some royalty free footage. Now before we hop into Adobe Premiere and After Effects and show you how to do everything there, I want to show you this quick shortcut within Adobe Photoshop that you may not know about. So if you click open within Photoshop and you just open up your normal footage straight into here, you should have this video timeline. If you're not seeing that, just go up to window and check on timeline. You guys can actually just right click on your footage here in the right. You can go up to convert to smart objects. Once you've done that, you can go to filter and use filter gallery. And they actually have a bunch of preset looks here, such as sketch, oil paint, canvas. In the bottom left, you can zoom out here to see that a little bit better. You can change your sliders here. So again, it gives you a really nice shortcut. It applies the filter to every single frame in your video. So I'll click OK. And again, if I scroll through, it applies to every frame. Just make sure you convert to smart object first so that it does that. Now, this is fast and easy. Like I said, the After Effects and Premiere version I do like better just because you have more control over every part of the video element. You can add in different effects from After Effects, etc. And we can create our own textured animations from scratch, save and export them for use in other projects. So we're gonna hop into After Effects. If you want to use a dynamic link in starting Premiere, you can right click on your footage and just click replace with After Effects composition. Or if you only have After Effects, just start within After Effects. So I'm going to create a new composition here in After Effects by clicking on this button. And let's go ahead and just name that tutorial. And now I'm gonna create another new composition here. So clicking the same button and in this composition, I'm going to name this textures. So this is where we plug in our textures, animate them, in this very simple trick. Let's go back over to our tutorial comp and let's drag in our footage. So again, pexels.com, we're gonna go ahead and just drag in one of these. And then in our project bin, we'll drag that straight into our tutorial comp. So there's a million different places where you can find textures. For me, I've been finding a lot of great ones on Unsplash. These are all 100% free. These are exactly what I'm looking for. A lot of the white and black, which works great for the textures and even some experimental ones like these colorful painted ones. You have these sort of scribbled ones. So I'm just going to download a bunch of these and I'm going to show you different variations for each. I also use this image on Google for the pencil strokes effect that you saw at the beginning. So you can always just go on Google images. If you need to, you can go to tools, usage rights, search for creative commons license. You can search for HD size. And the awesome thing about this, you can even just draw on a piece of paper. You can even doodle in some specific style, scan that image and use that yourself. So you can create your own custom textures. If you do have a photo scanner and you can plug that into this exact same workflow. So it allows for a lot of creativity within this. So once you've found whatever texture you'd like, go ahead and find wherever you save that image and drop that into your textured comp. All right, so I have my image in here. I'm gonna go ahead and select that and click S and scale that up. And then I'm gonna right click on it, pre-compose it and just click move all attributes into the new comp so that the new comp is this exact size. So now you have your texture in here, but it's just a still image. I'm gonna show you this quick and easy step to add a bit of this stop motion like animation. And this step here is so useful because you can take any image, any texture that you find on the internet, apply this and have all these different animated overlays for any videos you are using. So this in of itself, I think is super awesome. We're gonna start off by going to our effects and presets and searching for the reptile effect. So right here, CC reptile, reptile, whatever it's called. We're gonna go ahead and place that on our comp here. And what we're gonna do is just take all this expand right, expand left, etc. We're gonna set that at around 4,000. 
So you can copy and paste those values into all of those. And the thing I like about Reptile as opposed to Motion Tile, they have this little blend border slider here. So I like putting that up to something like 10. And then if you go back and select your footage here and we just click S to again, bring up scale. If we scale that down, you guys can start seeing what this effect is ultimately doing. It's just taking this image and repeating it over and over. So we have that all set up and ready to go. Now we're gonna add a quick expression just to add that animated movement. So go ahead and open up the transform options for this layer. You just need to click the triangle, go down to transform here, and you want to hover over a position. So I'm gonna hold down alt on my keyboard and just click this stopwatch next to position. And that's gonna open up this little expression editor. We're gonna add this quick little expression here to add our animated movements. So all you need to do, we want it to look like stop motion. So let's just add a little posterize time expression. Whatever you put in the brackets here, that's pretty much going to be the frame rate that you like to set. So for me, I like going with around 12. You can experiment with that value for different looks. Put a semicolon. And then the next line, this is what's actually going to add the movement. We're going to add a little wiggle expression. And then in our brackets here, we're going to write four comma 5,000. So if we click away and click play, here's what that's looking like. We have all these black boxes here. So let's just select the layer, click S and put that scale back up to 100. If for any reason you're still seeing any of these black boxes here, you can either continue scaling or raise the value of your reptile. So I can put that up to 5,000. If you need to, you can bump up the blend borders just so that goes away. And that's looking really great. We have this stop motion style scribbly animation. Again, those exact steps can help you take any image and add some really quick animation to it. You guys could always open up that position. You can mess with the expression values. This first parameter here is the speed of the wiggle. So if you want it to be a lot more fast, you can bump that up to something like 10. And this value is how much it wiggles. So again, you can raise or lower that to get your desired look. Let's pop back over to our tutorial comp here. And if we go over to our project bin in the top left, we can now just grab this entire texture composition that we set up and drag that as a layer into our tutorial comp. Now, another important thing I should mention here before we start going in and stacking all these different effects, this can be pretty computer intensive. If you are struggling, if you are getting a lot of lag while working on this, what I recommend you do is once you have created your animated texture, you go ahead and just render that out. Either just export, add to render queue straight from After Effects. Not only can you reuse that for other projects, but you can drag and drop that straight into here and then mess around with it with minimal lag. So keep that in mind, that can save you a lot of time. So at this point, all you really need to do is mess around with your blending modes. So you can take your blending mode for your texture layer and you can change around until you find whatever looks best. It's always gonna be different depending on the type of texture you are using. I liked going with something like vivid lights. Another key aspect of this is changing around the color balance. So you can go and apply something like a levels effect. I'm gonna search for that and just drop that onto my textures comp. You can change around the values here to find a good blend for whatever texture you are trying to add in here. Now some other little effects and tips here which are gonna help you finalize the look. If this is looking a little bit too overwhelming, you guys can always go in here and add something like a compound blur under blur and sharpen. So we'll drop that onto our textures and we'll change the blur layer to our actual footage here. And this is just going to smooth out our texture a bit. So if you need to, you can raise or lower this value just to have some control over the sharpness and how this is reacting with your normal footage. So the last two effects that I want to mention with an After Effects for tweaking the look of this, number one is going to be the add grain effect. Of course, you could just use noise, but I like to add this onto my original footage at the bottom here, not the textures. We're gonna change the viewing mode to final output. We're just gonna take the intensity and bump that up a tiny bit. So what I like about this is it adds a little bit more hand-drawn texture onto the original footage so that it doesn't just look like an overlay over top of normal footage. Another thing that can give you that stop motion feel is looking up a posterized time effect. Again, we added that in the expression for our texture composition. We can also add it to our normal footage here at the bottom. So take posterized time and just drag that onto there and then take your frame rate and set that at 12. Another thing you can stack on is the cartoon effect. So under effects and presets, just search for cartoon under stylize. Place that there. And I like to set this to fill in edges. 
Again, you can play around with the settings here just to find something you ultimately like. This will pretty much just add a lot more dots into the details as well as make the edges of this pop a bit more. Let's go back and look at the source inspirational here. I wanna go back and show you those steps one more time for creating the animated textures because I wanna talk about some experimental ways to do it with something like the paint strokes where you can mask around your subject. So back in After Effects here, say for example, you want to try some other textures. If they're cutting every few frames and changing the style, the making it flashy, but not just keeping it as one style and letting it play through. Create another new composition here and just name it Textures 2. Create a bunch of different styles and then piece them all together later on in Adobe Premiere. So I can go to that textures folder where I just saved a bunch. And before I use this one, this little colored painted um, picture here, we'll just drag that in. And again, the exact same steps. We'll do it pretty quick this time. You add in your Repetile, you bump these up something like 5,000, and then you go down to transform, alt, click. Again, those are posterized time. We put that at 12 and wiggle. But now check it out. I have another quick and easy animated clip, which I can now bring into any video. So please use these steps because you can literally create unlimited overlays for your videos. Like I said earlier, to prevent lag and to use these in multiple projects, you can just render it out straight from here. Again, you always wanna play around with the levels, the brightness, the contrast, just to fully get something you ultimately like. So at this point, you guys can render out your textured variations and bring them back into Premiere. Or of course, you could use that dynamic link to be able to see everything from After Effects in Premiere. Have fun experimenting, adding different things onto here. My best advice for that is just to browse through my different videos, find some different stylized look tutorials. We have over 500 videos on the channel now. You guys can definitely mix and match or of course use some presets or whatever. If you've seen the source material, they have a lot of hand-drawn lines here. I made a full guide on how you can do that. Create lines, paint strokes, brush stroke, animations, all within Adobe Premiere. So I'll leave the full tutorial to that down below. So I hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial you guys really loved the last tutorial that i put out the pixel characters just like you requested part two should be dropping on either monday or tuesday of next week so i'm excited to put that out hope you guys are as well as always guys thank you so much for watching thank you so much for supporting and i'll see you in the next one